Um, I need you to make that log base 4 of x. Okay, log base 4 of x. Because um, otherwise it would just be really boring. Um, let's practice with the change of base. Okay, so we're going to look at evaluating these on the calculator. So here's our function, f of x is log base 4 of x. What if x is 10? Okay, what if x is 10? So that is log base 4 of 10, which doing that on the calculator, obviously 4 to an even whole number power is not 10. 10 is not a power of 4, so we would have to evaluate this on the calculator. So log of 10 divided by log of 4. It's the log of the quote-unquote bigger number, not necessarily bigger in magnitude, just it's not the subscript, over the log of the base. So we type that in. Log of 10, again, being careful that we close our parentheses after the 10, then divide log of 4. Okay, so that is approximately 1.661 which makes sense if we think about it because 4 to the first is 4 and 4 squared is 16 and 10 is between 4 and 16 so it makes sense that the answer is between 1 and 2. Okay, uh, how about log base 4 of 1 third? Log base 4 of 1 third, that's the log of 1 third divided by the log of 4. Again, make sure that we close our parentheses after the 1 third before we type in the log of 4. It gives us a negative number, which should make sense because 1 third is smaller than 4 to the first power. So the only way to get something smaller than 4 is to do um, something smaller than, than 1, the first power. Okay, uh, 2.5, log of 4, log base 4 of 2.5, log of 2.5 divided by log of 4, Close your parentheses, approximately 0.661. Okay, log base 4 of negative 2. So that's the log of negative 2 over the log of I get an error, non-real answer. Why would I get an error? Hmm? Yeah, it's the log of the negative number. Okay, but numerically, why does that make sense? Why can't we take the log of the negative number? It's okay. What, but, I mean, what, what's it? Why does x have to be greater than zero, though? Right. If we raise 4 to a power, there's no way we're going to get a negative number out of that. There's no way we can raise a positive number to a power and get a negative number. If raising something to a power means you multiply it by itself multiple times, well, if you're multiplying positives upon positives, the answer is always going to be positive. Okay, so yes, that's why we can't take the log of a negative number. Um, this is, we could say, undefined, does not exist, no solution. You can't take the log of a negative number. Okay, cannot take the log of a negative number. But I, I just want to make sure you understand why we can't take the log of a negative number. Okay, uh, now these will be easy. <coughs> Excuse me. Natural log, we don't have to worry about change base here, okay? This is just making sure we know where the button is and that we can type it in correctly, okay? The natural log of 2 is less than 1, which should make sense because 
And for some reason, I always read the natural log in cursive, probably because my ones and L's look very much alike, so this way there's no confusion. Um, so just so you know, if you see that, that's just how I write mine, okay? Uh, it makes sense that this is less than one because E is 2.718 approximately, so two is less than that, so it makes sense that the answer should be less than one, okay? Uh, natural log 0.3. negative 1.204 that should be negative because 0.3 is a number that is less than 1 only way we're going to get a number less than 1 is if we've got a negative exponent and put something in the denominator C automatically what can you tell me undefined okay cannot take the natural log or the common log or any log of a negative number and D is just there so that you know you can type anything in. It doesn't matter what the number is. As long as it is not negative or zero, you can find the log of it. Um, one plus the square root of two. I don't know how wild earth we would want to know the natural log of that, but you never know. I'm just trying to make a point. You can type anything or you can take the log of anything but zero and a negative number. Okay, now let's look at solving some equations, solving some exponential equations that uh, we can't do the way we did yesterday. Okay, we can't do them the way we did them yesterday. So example three here, our first one is three times two to the x is equal to 42. Our first step is we've got to get that exponential expression by itself. And you can never change the base of the exponential by multiplying or dividing or subtracting or adding or anything like that. The only way you can change the base is if you're rewriting it um, in terms of uh, its powers. So what I mean is 3 times 2 to the x is not equal to 6 to the x. Okay, 3 times 2 to the x is not equal to 6 to the x. You cannot change that base of 2 by multiplying it by the 3. So to move that 3, we've got to divide both sides by 3. Uh, 42 divided by 3, that should go evenly. Um, 1, 14. Okay, now, 14, the way that we solved these yesterday, we would want to rewrite 14 so that it's a base of 2. Well, 14 is not a power of 2. Uh, 2 cubed is 8. 2 to the 4th is 16. We can't get 14 out of that. So, the way that we deal with this is we're going to write this in logarithmic form. Now, it's a lot easier to go from log form to exponential form. It's a little bit, I don't want to say trickier, it's just you have to be more careful with it to write it in log form. But the good thing is the base of the logarithm is always the exact same thing as the base of the exponential. So the exponential had base 2, so the logarithm is base 2. And pretty much the 14 and the x just kind of switch places. So now the 14 is with the 2, and the x is on the other side of the equal sign. And you can always check that really quickly. 2 to the x equals 14. Well, that's what I just had in the previous step. Now, that is the exact answer. Log base 2 of 14 is the exact answer to this problem. They may ask you for a decimal approximation to it, so then just use your change of base to type that into your calculator. Log of 14 divided by the log of 2, and you're there. Okay? It's approximately 3.807, and guess what? I can check my answer. Let me store that as x and type it into the original. 3 times 2 to the x gives me 42. Okay? All right. So let's look at example B. e to the x plus 5 equals 60. We have to get the exponential by itself first. So we've got to subtract 5 from both sides. e to the x equals 55. <coughs> Then we write it in logarithmic form. Well, since our base is e, we're going to use the natural log. The natural log of 55 is equal to x. And you don't have to write the base of e. It's understood. The natural log always has a base of e. 
So the natural log of 55 is the exact answer. If we wanted the decimal of it, we would just type it in. We can store it as x to check it. e to the x plus 5 gives us 60. Okay, so this is approximately 4.007. Okay, exact approximation. Same thing, it's just one is the exact answer, one is the approximation. I really don't know which one they're going to ask you for on the final exam, whether they're going to ask you for the exact or the approximation, so I just want you to be familiar with both. Okay, once we get to C, we've got a whole bunch of stuff going on with this one, but main principle is the same. We have to get the exponential by itself first, so I'm going to start by adding 4. Okay, we're just solving equations like we always solve equations, guys. All right, nothing has changed with those principles. So 2 times 3 to the 2t minus 5 is equal to 15. Then we divide by 2. Okay, now the exponential is isolated. Yes, it has stuff going on in its exponent that we'll deal with here in a minute, but at this point is when we need to write it in log form. So the base of the exponential is the base of the logarithm. The other stuff switches places, so it's log base 3 of 15 over 2 is equal to 2t minus 5. Now, before we've been done, but this isn't solved to the variable yet. So we've got a little bit more work to do. We need to add 5 to both sides. Now, just like we can't change the base of the exponential, you cannot change the logarithm. Okay, the logarithm does not change from this point forward. Anything we do to it is happening outside of the logarithm. So the plus five just goes there on the end, and then we divide both sides, the entire side, by two. So this is our exact answer. We can get an approximate answer. You gotta be careful with this though. Do the change of base first. Log of 15 over two. Close the parentheses, divided by the log of three. Do that part first, then add five, press enter, divide by two. Okay, I would do it in, in chopped up steps like that. I think that's the easiest way to do it. So it is approximately 3.417, which we can check very easily, store that as x, go back to the original, two parentheses, three. Now be careful with this. Because there's multiple terms in that exponent, you gotta put it in parentheses. Okay, so close the parentheses, that closes it on the exponent. Close the parentheses again, that closes it around the exponential. <clears throat> Minus 4, and that gives us 11. Okay, so ex, uh, exponential equations, parentheses, very important. Okay, very, very important with parentheses. All right.